Okay. Good evening, everyone. We'll call to order the regular meeting of the Board of Aldermen for Monday, uh, February 8th, 2021. And if everyone would please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and a silent prayer. Pledge of Allegiance. All the member Nali. All the member Nali. He's here. He is sir. muted. There you go. Present. All the woman Cavallo. Present. All the woman Cato. All the woman Cato. Alderman D. Giovan Carlo, I know you, sir. Here. Alderman Dorso. Here. Alderman Hunter. Here. Alderman Lopez. I'm here. Alderman Markley. Here. Alderman Matthews. In the house. Alderman Martinez McCarthy. Here. Alderman Nujane. Present. Alderman Salvio. Present. Alderman Weaver. Here. Alderman Zimmerman. Present. Alderman Pernaruski. Here. 14 present, one absent. Thank you. We have a quorum. And so the first item of business, oh, before we get to the first item of business this evening, um, I do want to just take a moment to wish a belated birthday to our colleague, our majority leader, Ernie Brunelli, whose uh, birthday was on Friday. And I think, what was it, Ernie, your 39th birthday on Friday? Well, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank then, you. Take all right. And then with that, we'll go to um, public speaking. So anyone who wishes to address the board should have called in. When we get you on the line, please state your name and address for the record. There's a five minute limit. And I'll give you a one minute heads up if we can get the first speaker on the line. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Oh, uh, am I on? You are, Martin. Go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm getting a lot of feedback uh, over here. Okay. Um, first of all, I want to say... Just, just, uh, just for the we, record, it, I, know, it, Marty, I know we know you. But oh, okay. I'm it. sorry. Okay. okay. Martin Spring, 1400 Meriden Road. I got to turn my TV down over here. Okay. Um, also, I want to say, uh, Waterbury, Connecticut, uh, a special uh, prayer for... Uh, Rob Kane and his family, uh, state representatives, United uh, State Senator from uh, Watertown, and uh, he was a good friend of mine. So if we could keep him and his family in our prayers, okay? All right, thank, thank you, Paul. Thank, thank you for that, Marty. That. I appreciate Welcome. that. No, I, I appreciate you bringing that okay. up. On, I should have. So thank you. Okay. Yeah, I know a lot of people knew uh, Rob. He's a good guy, and uh, I know he owned cartel. I used to go over there and see him a lot when I was down the street working, and uh, he was an, uh, an awful nice guy, a gentleman. And I, uh, I just want to let everybody know that you know he was a real good guy, and we keep his, him and his family and his uh, children in our prayers. Thank you, Paul. I do appreciate that. Oh, by the way, I want to say uh, when I called in the WATR AM, uh, you f filled in for the mayor. You did a great job. <laughs> Thank you. And I, I only am for two minutes, right? Okay. You called at the okay, end. My time is dead. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey. Okay. Well, listen. Um, I just want to say this. Um, I, what I want to have been talking about, and I didn't bring this up last time, and I appreciate everybody's indulgence. Is uh, I've been driving out when I take care of the work and stuff like that, and I go, I drive around quite a bit, you know, with my job and everything, and uh, I haven't seen uh, the uh, private contractors, um, if you will not sanding the uh, the roads. 
And I don't know why. I don't know if the administration is uh, aware of this. I don't know if the mayor is aware of this. I don't know if members of the board of Alderman are aware of it. And I don't know if our police officer is aware of this who helps us out in Waterville. But um, I haven't seen them, uh, you know, uh, utilizing the spreaders. And I don't know why. I know we only use sand. I know we don't use uh, rock salt. And so I haven't seen them use this at all. Matter of fact, one day I was taking care of the work. And uh, it's a city road, by the way, and uh, not a state road, because I know a lot of people misunderstand. They have state roads and city roads in Waterbury. And this was a city road, a few of them, and I didn't see them utilizing anything as far as the spreaders go. And I understand that, you know, a, a lot of people were upset about that. So you guys legislate a body, city of Waterbury, and I just thought I'd let you know. And, uh, you know, if you want to call me later at home, Paul, we can talk about this, okay? Because I really don't have a lot of time to go. Also, on the Woodtick Road by uh, Stop uh, Shopping Gold, a grocery store, the stop sign needs to be lit up over there by solar, if possible. I know I mentioned this before, that we should have some solar lights around uh, Waterbury, especially where the stop signs are. I knew they have another uh, municipalities and other, other towns around the state of Connecticut, okay? So that's something I think you guys should look into. And by the way, if anybody in my district wants to meet me, I'll show them what I'm talking about, okay? It's right by the store called um, Shop and Go Grocery Store, and it's a stop sign. People just fly right through that. Also, at the transfer station on Industrial Road, they have piles of old discarded tires, junk tires, if you will. They can be sold and used for road use, recycled, if you will entire plants that melt down the tires, chop them up, shred them up, and they uh, reuse these tires for uh, road use. And this is a brand new technology, as I told you guys before. This is being utilized all over Europe and Japan, and uh, I believe even in the Middle East and even in Germany and England, and uh, I believe Italy they use it, and also France. So this is some brand new technology that we could use, and I'm thinking if the you know administration wants to well, sell the tires, they could probably turn around and sell these discarded tires to these places, not even overseas, but I'm sure in the United States of America, they're using this brand new technology, especially down south where my daughter lives. Okay, I just thought I'd let you guys know this because we have a lot of potholes and ruts in the city of Waterbury, and I know the Public Works Department is doing an incredible job. And I know Dave Simpson is a very caring, compassionate person who, by the way, lives in Waterbury. But the cold patches aren't working, and uh, we should have meaningful repairs and stop using the Band-Aid approach. Again, uh, I don't really have a le lot of time left, but anybody who wants to call me, they're more than welcome to call me, and I, I would be more than happy to uh, talk to them. And by the way, before I go, I just want to let you know, when uh, Waterbury Human Rights Commission, we are going to be given a quarterly report pretty soon. Uh, we just got to get things set. And I was hoping that maybe someday, once the vaccines are distributed, that we're going to be able to have uh, our, uh, you know, in-house meetings again, because I sure do miss that coming down. And, you know, all you people on the board of all of them, both Republican and Democrat, you're all friends of mine, and I like you very much. And I know a lot of you come to our Waterville Community Club meetings, by the way, we're not having any meetings for a while. I know I said this last time, but the reason being is we got to see, uh, you know, what's going on with COVID. And we obviously can't get permission to go into old Waterville Firehouse until uh, we have the green light from the governor's office and the firemen. So, again, I want to well, just say to everybody, well, we're going to have another snowstorm coming up. It seems like the very busy uh, season right now till spring. So, um, you know, please be safe when you guys go home. And I guess this is working out really good, having a virtual over here and, uh, you know, calling in like we do because we can still have our meetings. Oh, yeah. And by the way, Karen wanted yeah. me to let you guys know that uh, as far as the schools go, we're happy the schools are going to be reopening and a lot of things are going to be reopening. So hopefully uh, everybody stays safe and uh, get your vaccines. OK, thank you. Thanks.
<clears throat> Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Sharon Samoska, 45 Pear Street in Waterbury, Connecticut. I just have three or four items I'd like to bring to your attention. One is, as I was looking at the financial information over the years for the city, I'm just inquiring why there is no budget for the Environmental Control Commission. I think they would profit from a budget so that they could outreach with publicity, with information, and do a better job. My primary reason for calling in tonight is I saw on the agenda the vegetation management plan by the Naugatuck Railroad Company. I recognize there are laws in Connecticut regarding the safety of the railroad tracks and the need to maintain the tracks and be proactive to prevent fires. I am requesting of you that you be advised and the residents be advised of what type of herbicides are to be used. The document that was sent in or the letter basically says there's no choice. The herbicides have to be used, but it does not specify what kind. It does not specify the amount. It does not specify the area to be covered. I would also ask that before you sign off on that, that you find out what are the real potential effects upon the Naugatuck River that we have been striving so hard to make better. And it can be so fragile and hurt within a very short span of time. What is the effect on the adjoining wetlands and what might the effect be on adjoining or neighboring properties? I also ask of the Naugatuck Railroad Company, what can be done to prevent trespassers from walking the tracks? I happened to go out today. I noticed that there were footprints in the snow going up the stairs leading to the tracks off of Bristol Street. In combination with the railroad tracks below the Bristol Babcock factory site, I would ask of the Board of Aldermen to please reach out to residents about this site. It is now roughly 35 years. That factory has sat vacant. It has had several fires. It now sits in a heap of ugly and dangerous ruins and debris, clearly with asbestos upon it and in the standing portions of the building that remain. It is concerning for toxic and hazardous chemicals and dangers to youth who trespass there who are unaware of the dangers underfoot. The signs on the fence do not mention anything about those dangers. How does our city start dialogue on this property? Yes, as far as I know, it's privately owned. But if any city resident had property that was so unkempt and dangerous, the resident would be in violation of the law. Why is there no action on this property after this length of time? With the proximity to the railroad tracks, the distances to be maintained as a result of the railroad bordering that property, I am inquiring of you, why is this not being viewed as, or why can it not be viewed as, a potential site for conservation of wildlife and flora and fauna in conjunction with the Greenway Project and our very own city conservation plans. A museum could be created there to share a more positive version of the history of the factory in Waterbury. Has the site been considered for solar energy? In our world of decreasing resources, rising prices for electricity, this could be profitable for Waterbury. I am appealing to you to push action on this property Let's make Waterbury on this farthest south end portion of town a better place for all to see, including those people who make a first impression of Waterbury when they come up the railroad tracks and see that site. Thank you so much, and thank you for all you're doing for our city to make it a better place. Let's keep on that track. Thank you. Good night. That's it. Okay, that was the, uh, the last caller. So with that, the next order of business is the approval of the minutes for the meeting of January 25th, 2021. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve the minutes of Monday, January 25th, 2021. We are Please. sorry, but the show has ended. Goodbye. So moved. <laughs> Thank you. Alderman Lopez. I second. Motion having been made and seconded. Does anyone have any changes to the minutes? Hearing none, then a yes vote will be to approve the minutes as presented. A no vote will be to disapprove it. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The minutes are approved. Um, with that, we, um, 
we'll go into uh, the committee of the whole to take up the items on the agenda this evening. Alderman Brunelli, is there a motion? So moved. Alderman Lopez. I second. Excuse me. Motion having made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, then all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and we're in sitting as a committee of the whole. Item number one is receiving place on file, and it's the submittal of Waterbury's financial status report for December of 2020. Item number two <clears throat> is an amendment number one to the professional services agreement with Teaching Strategies LLC to provide preschool curriculum assessment material and professional learning services. Alderman Brunelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number two. Alderman Lopez. I second. <clears throat> Motion having been made and seconded, is there any discussion? Mr. President. Yes, Alderman Lopez. Thank you for recognizing me. I have a couple, I just wanna make sure that I, I actually understand the contract. Um, if anyone from the Board of Ed or the Department of Ed uh, can actually explain to me when, when it refers to 46, an additional 46 units. What are units? Is that classes? Is there somebody here? I'm trying to see who's, is there anybody here from the Board of Education? Oh, Tara, you heard to answer those questions? Attorney Shaw? I'm not, I'm, thank you, President Panerski. I'm not here to answer those questions specifically. Um, I believe those are learning units. Um, I, I'm actually here on the next agenda item, but I was at the Board of Education presentation on this contract amendment, and I believe those are learning units. Um, that are and it's, it's an exchange of, the, of a certain type of units for units that will make it more accessible to families and to others, I think, to be able to access the information, if I read the contract correctly. That's correct. And they're, they expound upon what was previously going to be provided, which um, is the reason for the increase in the cost. Right. So I don't know if that helps you, Alderman Lopez, or? Um, not really, but um, then the, the, the fo my follow-up question would have been, um, I, I don't want to put Attorney Shaw on the, on the line here, but um, uh, Section 61.5, it states that the change of contract for training requires two consultants per day due to the size of staff, uh, but it doesn't say how many staff members are actually being trained. I I'm assuming these are obviously instructors, teachers that are down, they need to go through this training to be able to utilize the software, but it doesn't specify how many instructors. I, I see that there are 930 students listed on section 6.1.1, um, but it doesn't specify how many uh, instructors are actually participating in the training, but I, I, will, I, will, I will stop. Thank you. Okay, okay. anything further? And hearing none, a yes vote would be to approve the amendment to the professional services agreement. A no vote would be to disapprove it. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the amendment is approved. Item number two is requesting a creation of a new job specification for a position entitled contracts manager for the, uh, the Department of Education. Alderman Brunelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number three. Alderman Lopez. I second. Motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Go, go ahead, Alderman Lopez. Just a quick question. Um, I, I saw Scott is in here somewhere. Um, so the change or the additional title here, contract manager, this was performed by an employee within the school business office. Um, what happened to that employee? That is correct. That job was never filled. It's been vacant for many, many years now.
Okay, so when it says formally performed, you're telling me that the position had been vacant for five, ten years? Is that what is? I wouldn't say ten, but I would say for at least four or five. Okay, thanks. Mr. President? Yes. Uh, follow up to Alderman Lopez's question. I'm sorry, Alderman Barkley. I didn't, I didn't, it took me a minute to find you on the screen. Alderman Barkley, go ahead. No problem. Um, my question is, is that position then redlined or being eliminated um, since we are filling it and it hasn't been filled already and we're making a new position up in its place? Yeah, it's not my understanding that that position will be backfilled. Effectively, this position replaces the previous position. Okay, there, there's you. been a lot of changes. There's been a lot of other changes in that office. Um, but at this point in time, it's my understanding that the job uh, formerly held, the individual's name was Paul Mezzacara, is no longer going to be backfilled. Okay. Any, any other questions? Okay, so I just, just uh, some background. The idea here is to put this position in place. As you know, we get uh, probably the largest number of contracts that come to this board from a single city entity is from the Board of Education. And we do hundreds of them in the course of a year. Um, and the idea is to have someone with the qualifications that are set forth in this job uh, description uh, that would be able to handle that, put them together, make sure the whole process is being handled appropriately, it's being handled efficiently, um, and hopefully some of the issues that we face with these where we're getting them late and other things are happening will no longer be a problem going forward. That's what this is designed to do. And this, the, this position is in the budget, so it's not a matter that it wasn't anticipated. The, the funding for this position is already in the budget, so it's just a matter of formalizing the position and locking down the qualifications for it. So um, with that, is there any further discussion or any further questions? Hearing none, then a yes vote would be to approve the um, creation of the new job specification for contracts manager in the Department of Education. A no vote would be to disapprove it. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously, and the position is um, recommended for approval. With that, the next item, item number four, is on uh, is a receiving place on file. It's a submittal of the 2021 Railroad Vegetation Management Plan. And then item, uh, the next uh, action item, the last action item, is the request for tax refunds for tax overpayments in the amounts of $19,615.20. Alderman Brunelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve the request for refunds. Alderman Lopez. I second. Motion having been made and seconded. Does anyone have any questions or is there any discussion? And hearing none, a yes vote will be to approve the refunds and no vote will be to disapprove them. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the refunds are recommended for approval. Um, with that, there's nothing further at this point for the Committee of the Whole. So, Alderman Bernelli, I'd entertain a motion to return to the regular order of business. So moved. Alderman Lopez. I second. Thank you. With motion having been made and seconded, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. And we're back in the regular order of business. So just the uh, following items then would be on the consent calendar. Item one is uh, received and placed on file. Item number two is on consent to approve the amendment number one to professional services agreement with Teaching Strategies LLC. Item number three is on consent to approve the new job specification for the position and contracts manager in the Department of Education. Item four is received and placed on file. And the standing committee report the uh, refunds for tax overpayments in the amount of $19,615.20 are on the consent calendar. Alderman Brunelli, is there a motion with respect to the consent calendar? Motion approved the consent calendar as read. Motion having been made. Alderman Lopez, is there a second? A second. Motion having been made and seconded. Are there any additions or deletions to the consent calendar as presented? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the consent calendar signify by saying aye. 
Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The consent calendar is approved unanimously. Um, with that, unless someone has something for the good of the order, there's nothing further to come before this board this evening. Alderman Brunelli? Motion to adjourn. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion to adjourn having been made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it and we're, we are now adjourned. Uh, thank you everyone for your participation this evening. Have a great week. Stay safe in the snow and from the COVID and we'll see you all back here in two weeks. All right. Good night. 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 Good night.